brothers coming up. Like, Good, like, man. Like I say, we want to make sure that our people know that uh, today's uh, service is not in play. But oh, overall, at the end of the day, bro, we want to sit down and talk to brothers. That's what we want you to. Understand? Yeah. So, yeah. Like I say, you get with my superiors. You talking to my superior. Okay. You know we do everything decently and in order. All right, we don't have problems with that. Go from believe yeah. what they need in the Bible. Uh -huh. That's what we gonna teach them. As far as brothers trying to, you know, come back and forth with debates, we ain't moving with that. Well, no, no. We well, letting people know. Well, we, we not trying to get talk nothing well, about listen. a Christian church. Well, listen. But the that's key right there. Exactly. Uh -huh. That's a great point. He, they don't want to listen. They want to go and instruct. So the whole narrative that they paint, we just want to ask some questions. You, you don't want to hear the answers. That's the bottom line. You want to paint a narrative is what you want to do. But I'm saying, but 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 but, but, but dialogue. Hold on one second. Dialogue says this, though, right? Dialogue. Dialogue says this that one person talks and then others come and talk, right? So. He just put the sign on the door and said, My job's done here. He just walked in. Deuteronomy 28 and we're like hey we want y'all to go to Deuteronomy 28 we excited about that because we got so quote unquote precepts for all this stuff that we know they didn't have so then when <laughs> you can tell when Mike is asking the question who was the king my man's looking like oh shoot all right that wasn't a part of the script <laughs> so Jehoiakim the white king of Israel <laughs> so can you explain let's say someone's new to this what is the significance of that question and their answer, right? Can you kind of break it down bit by bit why this is even significant? You know, it's not just Bible trivia. There's a reason to this. Can you guys help the audience understand what's going on there, please? Well, well the whole thing is uh, Deuteronomy 28, verses 15 through 68, supposed to recognize that these are the curses that are upon blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. And to say that uh, the trans transatlantic slave trade shows um, that blacks are cursed. And it goes back to Deuteronomy 28. But the problem is, if you can't identify the king, then that puts a monkey wrench into your whole uh, entire ideology or theology. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rechaha, Kodash. And double honors to the elder apostles and even the elder bishops of Great Millstone. Honors also to you, brethren, you fellow believers of the truth. Okay, and shalom to the elect. So anyway, um, came across this video. Christian apologists scare IUIC Israelites into canceling class. I believe Apostle Tahar did a video on it as I went and checked. I don't know if anybody did one on it, but I'll get my two cents. Um, these guys, first of all, you've never seen a Christian. These Christians have now left the church to try to become street apologists. I don't know. Maybe they all would never was truly in the church with suit and tie. I don't know. This guy, Elder Mike, he's easy. He's easy. And so what these guys do, they pick on one particular scripture that they read from the commentaries or the scholars. And this is, that's what they do. And I've just did a video previously on the scholars, how they say one thing, but then if you read different ones, they'll say something else. So they're not even credible on all things. Some things, yes, but not all things. So really it boils down to what? 
Let's go to Matthew 13. Matthew 13. These guys is acting like complete fools. I mean, there's a lot I can't say in this video, but they had a name for guys that will show out for the top guy. That's the best way I can put it. There's no way these guys will be jumping around acting this foolish if they wasn't under the banner of vocab or they didn't know they was going to sit on vocab seat or his panel. You got to know that. I watched a couple of those guys, did videos on them, and none of them behaved that way. But for vocab, they jumping and spinning on one toe, you know? They're, they're moonwalking and spinning around and just acting complete, just completely crazy just to prove a point, right? Matthew 13 and 9. Now, I'm going to get into the Deuteronomy for a little bit because, well, let me read this because you have to understand that even in that time, when things were being spoken, it wasn't fully clear on a lot of things. Like John the Revelator, when you go to Revelation 13, it wasn't clear to him on a lot of things. Even with Apostle Paul, you know, there's certain things that they wasn't fully clear on yet because you had prophetic events. Some of them believed the coming of the Lord was coming in the next five years or so. It's been thousands of years. But the day of the Lord is a thousand is a thousand years, right? So Matthew thirteen and nine. Who have ears to hear, let them hear. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries, right? So you gotta understand the mysteries is something that is not really known. The mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. So if you claim to be a preacher, which means prophet, and you're not prophesying the downfall of a kingdom. Now, there's a whole lot of scriptures they can go into in the Old Testament, right? Which that's why they like to stay in the New Testament, which they're not going to go into the fact that these preachers and these Christian pastors were set up under the, um, the authority of white supremacy, right? Doing slavery and, and, uh, converted through the Protestants, the evangelicals and Protestants who had a beef between enslaving or let me say taking a Negro and making him a, a Christian or not. <clears throat> they never thought it was in the best interest of you so-called Negroes and Native Americans. But what they thought is they found that if we can make and convert these people to be Christian, they can be better slaves. And that's what happened. And it worked. But they won't go into the history of that. They won't go into the history of the Reformation, you know, of the 1830s and the universalism. Yeah, they won't talk about that either, which our people were responsible for way before, like with the uh, virgin birth, queen of heaven, virgin birth. We kind of did that, but it phased out. And then during the Reformation, the Roman Catholics took it and adopted back on steroids and made a white. You know, and made baby Jesus white. See, this is all the wickedness from the root of Christianity that we are, and you're surprised why we don't like Christianity. If I didn't find the truth, there's no way I would walk back up in those churches, man. They never told us the truth. Then you leave the truth, and it's a liquor store. I mean, you leave the church, it's a liquor store right across the street, and drug dealers down the street, and a Roman Catholic church in the black neighborhoods. I'm not going to go all into that, man. It's madness. Right? Why? And the disciples came and said unto him, why speak unto them in parables? He answered and said, because it's given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but unto them uh, it is not given. So when we say blacks, Latinos, Native Americans, we got to speak broader because the, uh, the Israelites, basically, when you read Deuteronomy 28, I mean, it goes for the, you know, the, 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 the immediate so-called Negroes and Native Americans, right, that had the, this complexion because it was racism against your skin complexion. Well, you remember the black Irish, they didn't catch the hell like Jake. But you must understand that now you got Israelites who scattered abroad, 
all over the place, man. And even from the time of then, you got some of them now look may look like different nations, considering that we migrated in a different land since since slavery. Some of us went back to Africa. Some of us went to Europe. You know, then the wars came, and you know, in Vietnam War and various other places. So we all over the place. We everywhere. So we'll say the Israelites that are scattered, but we'll say so-called blacks, Latinos, Native Americans, if you get the point. Let's get a scripture. Joel 3 and, and 2. I bet you they'll read the uh, commentaries and they'll say something else. Now let's say that Deuteronomy 28 happened back in Babylon, right? We'll get into that too. Let's say it happened and it was the slave ships and we went through it. But you know there's something called a generational curse. And Yahawashai, when he came on the scene, we're not delivered. Right? He still has to come back to deliver his elect. Right? Job 3 and 2. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, Yahweh's judgment, Yahweh's Shapat, and will plead with them there for my people, my people, plural, and for my heritage, Israel. This is not talking about the land. Although some of our people may be sprinkled amongst them as well. Who they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. And they have cast lots for my people. And have given a boy for a harlot. And sold a girl for a wine that they might drink. Now in the shameful madness about this whole situation. Is these guys is, is uh, willing to to throw out what happened to us, right? Just write it off. They'll say, well, we recognize it, this and that, but you can't say it was the, the curses. Now, if any curse, people are curses us, and if anybody went through a curse like that, that was a curse of judgment from the Lord. Even white evangelicals, they were saying that, or those Protestants, they were cursed that way so we own them. That's why America needs to go on. They are, they're meant to be slaves. That's how they thought. But those are all Christians thinking that. Right? Those are all Christians thinking that. Romans 15 and 4. For whatsoever thing were written aforetime were, were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now this was written back then but for whatsoever things were written aforetimes were written for our learning so this is clear why we see Deuteronomy 28 go through different phases of um, of time which still meant pretty much even in 70 AD even afterwards right even other times even us in Babylon, in certain things that happened to us, that might have twofold happened. Even all the way up to today, were we delivered? No, we're not delivered yet. We're not saved. We're still in captivity. Right? So, for whatsoever thing were written aforetime, were written for our learning. So, those things that was written before. This is why Christians don't go into the Old Testament prophecies. Now, Jeremiah 28 and 8, uh, what does it say? Jeremiah 28 and 8 says, The prophets of old, have, I'm just quoting, have prophesied against uh, great kingdoms, many kingdoms of war and pestilence. So wouldn't that be happening today? And if that's the case, who are these guys running around, jumping around, spinning around, you, you jakes need to stop it, man. You might pull a muscle. You might feel it the next day. This guy, Elder Mike, is low level, by the way. He calls himself an elder. I've left comments on his channel in the past, and I've yet, all these guys, I leave comments on their channel. I don't even leave nothing on vocabs. But I left comments on all these guys' channels, which I have left one on vocab before. But for the most part, they never answer back. I even put a simple scripture in there. They don't never answer. So they need the carriage juice from vocab to get it going. Right? Let's go to um, in the old Bible. Because they say in 2868 says, you will offer yourselves up. That, came, that dogma came along 
with the scholar translations later on. The Bible never said that. They got confused because it said, and no man shall buy you, meaning B-Y-E, not B-U-Y. And they changed it to B-U-Y, meaning buy you when you go to the old English, no man will be beside you. And no man will redeem you or deliver you. That's what that meant. So when it says, the Lord shall lead thee again, a yin by ships, it says shippies, into Egypt by the way of which he said to thee, that thou should have no more see it. There thou shalt be sold to thine enemies for servants and handmaids, and no man shall buy you, right? Well, no, it don't say buy you, and no man shall deliver thee. So it don't say anything about offering yourself up and no man's going to buy you, meaning buy you back or whatever. That that was a made-up translation because they didn't understand what buy meant. But, hey, man, that's what they do, right? It says, this is verse 36, And the Lord shall lead thee and thy king, whom thou shalt ordain on thee. And that's the key. Uh, ordained. And a folk which uh, thou knowest not, uh, which... To the folk that thou knowest not, thou and thy phaedrus, and thou shalt serve there to alien goddess, to a tree and stone. I don't know that this is very old English. So that king would have been David, right? But we have did videos on that. So let's go to Luke 1 and 68. It says, and this is why I'm going to get to that. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has revisited and redeemed his people and have raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Right? Because that all correlates with salvation. Deuteronomy 28, 36, you and your king and your salvation under the house of David. Yahweh, Yahweh child under the house of David. Right? Under the house of David. Everybody went to the uh, queen of heaven, Mary, which Mary did a great thing. But why is it David? Because uh, um, out of out of David, uh, loins came Solomon, who was Yahawashah. So now if Mary was such and such top, top importance, which he was a good importance to understand, why didn't it say under the uh, house of Mary, right? Who had Yahweh It never said that. Under the house of David. So let's go to Luke. It's called Return of the Son of Man. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and the stars upon the earth with distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken and when they shall see the son of man coming in the cloud with power and great glory and here's the point and when these things begin to come to pass then look up and lift up your heads for your this this is like Luke 168 for your redemption joy of nigh who's the your for your redemption draweth nigh. Talking about the Israelites. That's what this whole book is talking about. So who's the your? Let's go back to Luke 168. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, power of Israel, for he have visited and redeemed his people and have raised up a horn of salvation for us in, his, in, his, in, uh, in the house of his servant David. And he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets. Right? You can't be serious that these guys are holy prophets. Which have been since the world began. Meaning they're back. That we should be saved from our enemies. And from the hands of all that hate us. 
So you mean to tell me all this mess that happened to us, all this slaveries, and the people whitewashed it. If they knew, if they felt felt that they were the real people of the Bible, they would have had to whitewash it because it would show it was them. But they whitewashed the images. The lie was covered, but now it's being exposed. That we should be saved from our enemies to perform the mercies and promise to our fathers and remember his holy covenant. I don't know how everybody gets in on that. The oath which swear to our father Abraham. That's pretty much to the point. I mean, I don't know what IUIC was thinking or what was going on, but they, I don't think those guys, Elder Mike and certain ones, they won't go up to the more seasoned uh, brothers of IUIC. But, you know, I'm looking at it from a perspective of them. Now, IUIC got theirs recorded, and this is the dangers of, you know, and, you know, after all these debates, you know these guys are there for a reason. They're just hecklers. What are you going to get out of that? You really think you're going to uh, convince a twisting, twisting scripture, a, a, a twisting preacher for vocab? That's not going to happen, man. You're not going to convince them guys. Them guys are there not to even convince you. Those guys are there to prove a point to try to uh, uh, rebound Christianity. That's all I have on that show.